seems like it's recording. Okay, cool. All right, do my little intro deal. Hello, and welcome to the Fit 15 podcast show. I'm your host, Catherine Basu, and today we have a very special episode, not only because we have a very special guest, but also because this episode is going to be shown as a video as well, so you can see my crazy headphones that I use for, and microphone that I use for the show, and you get to see my guest in person almost, so definitely go and check out the show notes so you can find the link there and, and check us out as we do our interview. I'm going to jump right into the interview now and share a little bit more about my guest. So this guest is actually a client of mine. Her name is Meredith, and I lost her intro. She's waving there so that we are <laughs> filling up the time while I'm <laughs> finding my notes. So here is a little bit more about Meredith. Meredith Rice, currently residing in Arkansas, became a fit armadillo in 2013 to lose weight in preparation for her wedding taking place the following year. Through an internet search, she found fit armadillo and the rest is history. She lost 70 pounds and other than a brief lapse has kept it off. She will tell you that fit armadillo is responsible for that and she no longer despises running as much. <laughs> so welcome, Meredith. Thank you for, for joining me for my podcast show. Thanks for having me. Yes, that as much is very important. Catherine likes to leave that out sometimes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad that it's changed. You know, that's, that's all that matters. Not that bad. <laughs> So before you started, or when you started work, working with me, would love to have you share with people that don't know your story, because I have shared your story before on the blog, but that was now, I mean, we started working together. I can't believe that's been four years, almost five years now. That's crazy. <laughs> around September of 2013, so yeah. yeah. It's been, yeah. time flies when you're having fun, or when you're on the run. That's right. <laughs> So when you started working with me, what was your goal? My goal was, like you said in my intro, to lose weight for my wedding. But I also, um, after meeting you at Starbucks and <laughs> kind of um, telling you my past with uh, running and our love-hate relationship, um, I set a goal to run a 5K without stopping. That was my goal. And I'm actually wearing the, sh the race shirt for that very 5K. So, <laughs> See? So it did happen. It did happen. I ran this whole run um, without stopping. And it was so cold. It was properly named the Rudolph Fun Run because it was very cold, which for Houston was really weird and unnatural. But you came out in the cold and cheered me on, and I made it. So <laughs> I know. I feel like at that time, I mean, I grew up in Connecticut, but I feel like I didn't have as many of my warm clothes handy that I should have as a cheerleader. So I always joke that um, when I went through that process with you that I lost all my insulation, so I was freezing. <laughs> and I went from being someone that was pretty much always hot, or at least not very cold, to now I'm always cold. Like, I have a heater, I have jackets, I have blankets. I'm always cold now. But I mean, I'll take it. Some of the best people have that problem. <laughs> I have that problem. My mom has that problem, so she would probably agree with that. See? And <laughs> chocolate and sweaters, so I, I'm okay with that. Awesome. So, have you, had you ever run or been successful at losing a lot of weight in the past before we started working together? No, um... I did sports in high school. It was a small school. I always said that they were kind of stuck with me. That was kind of the extent of my athletic uh, prowess, as you would say. And as far as weight, I, I never made it past like a week or two. <laughs> was like diets or something. I would just like lose motivation um, or get distracted by chocolate cake or something. <laughs> I mean, chocolate cake is definitely tempting. I'm not going to, or at least I'll, I'm going to, I'll be honest. I'll, I'm not really a big cake fan, but anything else chocolate, I'm happy to take off of anyone's hands. Yeah, I'm more of a brownie person now that I say that. <laughs> Probably like brownie, cupcake, cookie, then, then regular. <laughs> In case and anyone I wants to send us any like gifts. That is fine. <laughs> See? 
So what do you think made a different that time compared to previous attempts? Yeah, I think the difference this time was, first of all, you. I had to be accountable to someone, but it wasn't like a drill sergeant accountability. You know, you're, you're a very, very sweet person and it's very, you're very encouraging. And I think that was a difference maker. And then also, I think what made this time different, I just felt supported this time. Because a lot of times, I, I mean, I did the workouts on my own for the most part in our weekly workouts together in person that time. Um, <laughs> but other than that, I did most of the workouts on my own. But I knew that I could always text you um, if I was feeling down or um, anything like that. I just felt very supported. And I think that made all the difference because it can get lonely on the on those, uh, you know, treadmills or gyms. Yeah, I definitely. Well, all the pros. <laughs> well, I appreciate you you sharing that, and you make me made me blush a little bit. But uh, definitely have to give you credit too, because you know I have clients of all different abilities and and whatnot. But you definitely have a lot of the extra, extra you know internal motivation too that was able to lead you through the other workouts. That's that's important too, and something that people should think about when they're looking for a trainer or just getting started, whether they have a trainer or just a friend that supports them, you know, whether they have to commit to a certain number of times in person with their friend or just texting can be based on your motivation. So it's good to kind of think about that. Yeah, it was good to think about the dress too. Because I didn't have the dress yet, but I was like, I'm going to fit into, you know, whatever. So, <laughs> and I had a before picture and just, I had other friends that had gone through similar things and they were very helpful as well. Um, but, but yeah, mostly it's about finding, finding those people that will support you. And then it does come, it does take a lot of internal motivation because you, because you do most of the work on your own. So, yep. No, that's true. I can't, I wish I could be with you all the time, but I can't. (laughs) (laughs) Meredith foam roll. Meredith. For you, Rod. You're you're there. You're there. See, <laughs> it took a while, maybe, but now now I'm in, internally there. I might do a plank. I think of you <laughs> at a park, and someone drives by with their window open and their music blaring. I think of you too. <laughs> yeah, we did have some some good uh, music accompaniment when we were training together. <laughs> Riachi, we we had a very good mix. So, so four years ago, you had your goal to do one race where you wouldn't stop and then and fit into your wedding dress, and you had your weight loss goal for that. What are your goals and plans now? Well, I am currently training for a half marathon, and not just that, a 5K, 10K, and half marathon all in the same weekend um, for Run Disney. So that's my goal now. And then just in the seat. Oh, and also, you know, just other other runs. I just got done with a 10K, a local 10K. And I'm going to do, of course, the Fit Armadillo virtual run. And <laughs> other races coming up in the future after Disney. So, but right now, Disney's my main goal. You, you may, you may be able to talk me into a marathon someday, but... <gasps> Oh, but, it's it's videotaped now. We have the evidence. So. But I may feel differently after February. <laughs> I thought I may be like, no. I mean, I thought that too. I thought I never would want to run a half marathon because I would just keep thinking that I have to do it twice to do a marathon. But then things happen. Yeah, that's rough. I mean, just thinking, I just had the 10K, like I said, and I was like thinking to myself, okay, a half marathon's double this. <laughs> well, I'll be pretty tired, but I i mean, I feel like I could do that. And then when I thought about it, I was like, four times this. <laughs> <laughs> Full marathon, I don't know about that. <laughs> Just act on a day other than race day, and I might tell you something different. <laughs> See? Well, I, I always think it's all, if you can put in your training, then you, have, you trust your training and... It might be hard to trust it the week leading up to the race, but 
usually you'll yeah. be good. <laughs> therapist the week the week of the race because <laughs> stress. But it, it is it is mostly mental gain, both in running and in fitness. That has a lot to do with your motivation. You just if you can get past your mind block, then you can do it. Yep, no, definitely. And you have to tell them, though, so you, you ran your 10K, your first 10K, but and you got your proof of time for Disney. Yes. Which was your goal, but you didn't tell them anything else exciting that happened with your 10K. Yes. So I was, the week leading up to the race, I was looking at the times for last year because the 10K did not hand out medals unless you placed in your age group. And I was hoping i was looking at the last year's times and i was thinking well if i pr by quite a bit you know i might get third place and so i went out there hoping to medal and i didn't get third i got second so <laughs> i got a medal and i was really good about it. and a gong set up if you um got a PR, which is a personal record. And so I got to ring the gong. So that was really <laughs> No, I love it. I'm, I'm definitely proud of you. And it's awesome, you know, going from not so sure about running to running your first 10K and even getting a medal for being second in your age group. So you definitely need to be proud of yourself before going on to the next uh, training goal, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I had Catherine in my mind then too. She's she says, I wish I could be with you. She was with me during that race because she told me before the race, I was feeling, I was telling her my stomach hurts. Like, I don't know if I can do this. I'm so nervous. And she was like, well, oh, a mantra that I keep in my mind when I'm running and it really helps me is um, I am strong. This is my race. And so uh, I had all these things I had lined up in my mind to think about, like if I needed some motivation and uh, I didn't use hardly any of that. I, <laughs> I just kept repeating Catherine's mantra <laughs> and, and that kept me going pretty much. It's a good portion of the race, especially on the mile um, that was basically all uphill. That was pretty much the Catherine mile. <laughs> Help. It's, def it's definitely a good one I, I try to think of it myself like kind of breathe in like I am strong and then breathe out this is my race because it also helps me calm down a little bit more or get some good breaths in when I run so I'm glad that yep. it was effective I was like okay like everybody move over like this race isn't going to know what hit them like, I'm <laughs> so that gave me a little like okay I'm tired this. See, running like a girl. <laughs> there, so. yeah, run, run like a girl, literally. So. <laughs> so, any any advice you have, Meredith, for people at the beginning of their fitness journey? Yeah, I mean, just just don't you know, if you have a bad day, don't give up on it. Just keep going, you know, pick yourself up, keep going, and find that support system because that's going to be invaluable. Whether it's fit armadillo, a member of your family, just just someone when you have a bad day to talk to about it, um, and and to really pull you through. If if they can't be there working out with you or going out running with you, um, just just some support system. And like I said, just don't give up. Just just do it because there's been plenty of days where I didn't want to work out. And I was dreading it all day, and then I did it, and I felt I felt so much better afterwards. I'm like, okay, I did that. And if you just take that one day at a time, you know, one workout at a time, you'll be amazed, like, you know, months later that you're like, oh, yeah, I did that. And it gets easier um, to trick your mind into doing these things, and <laughs> it, it gets better after that. The, the, first, the first month or two, when you're forming the habit is the hardest. So just keep telling yourself, you know, just make it through this workout or make it through this week. And, and then it'll just become easier and easier. I love it. I mean, there's a reason why they say, especially for running that it's 90% mental because it really is a lot of the, the mind tricks, right? Yeah. Um, it definitely, it definitely is a lot of mind tricks and 
Um, you can you can do anything. That's why they have that saying: you can do anything you set your mind to. That's just what you gotta do. You just gotta set your mind to something. And there was a quote, something about it takes four weeks um, to set a habit, or or six weeks. Of, I don't know the exact quote. I probably shouldn't be quoting. <laughs> But it also says something like it takes four weeks for you to know a difference, eight weeks for other people to know a difference that are close to you and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So those early days are the are the toughest. But if, if you can make it through that um, with your support system, you can do it. Awesome. Well, great. Definitely great advice. Anything else you wanted to share with us, Meredith, about your journey or anything? As I'm still a work in progress, so I'm definitely not a pro, but um, like I said, I brag on Catherine all the time. Oh. <laughs> she is a big part of it, so she, keeps, she helps keep me motivated and calm <laughs> when, I'm, when I'm freaking out over, oh, I can't do this or that or whatever, and um, also I am starting to document my training journey to that half marathon, the Disney Princess half marathon is what it is. And uh, my channel's Rice Rice Runner. So if you want to see more from me, you can head over there. And uh, and I also have some, some more of my story on there and I do goofy things and you'll see my cats some, so. <laughs> They're trying to take over the channel, but. Yes, yes, I already have I have to kick off one of my cats off the treadmill all the time. So, <laughs> battle. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time to share some insights from your journey and making me blush a lot. I didn't expect all that. But, but and I really, I personally loved following your finished journey on YouTube. So, I definitely encourage other people. I mean, I like it for different reasons because I get to see that you're, that you're keeping up with your workouts. So that makes me happy as a trainer. <laughs> Catherine's going to be watching. <laughs> so that's why I a lot, you know, like it most, most of the time that I'm watching, but it is very inspirational and it's good. And you, know, you guys can see kind of what she's doing and what, what it takes to have a good routine. And I think you'll enjoy following her story. So I highly recommend checking that out. And I think that's a wrap for this episode of the Fit 15. We'll probably have Meredith back at least one more time because we have to get her a recap from the Disney race once she survives that. So,